happy birthday as well. You always find the latest courtyard. And in solution, hey, in out of the box. Hello and welcome to Radio Waves by Dodderbird. If you enjoy reviews, comparisons, band scans of new and classic portable radios, then make sure to subscribe and tap the bell icon so you don't miss any of my most awesome videos. In front of us, we have the Ratty SW10. This is an AM-FM weather alert, high capacity emergency radio. You can find this retailing on their site for $39.99. I'll links below. There's a summer code called SUMMER23 for 10% off nice bringing the price down to $35 and if you spend a certain amount of money I have a affiliate link there it saves you 15 bucks that's awesome I think there's free shipping at a certain rate so definitely worth checking out I've been buying from their site it's pretty cool so let's check out the box ready emergency radios got this red black themed analog dial nice got some bullet points there back nothing side we got a little something there and I think that's it. So I took everything out of the box to make this easy. So let's go ahead and show you what came in there. First, the star of the show. There we go. Now I may have to put down something for this. Uh, yeah, the Rady SW10. We get a charging cable. It's Type-C. A lot of you guys love that. I love it. I think it's awesome. So USB Type-C to charge the battery. Not bad. And we get a manual. Nice. Let's go through this real quick. Kind of open it up and show you. There's contents. I'll just open this whole thing and just go through it, and you guys can freeze frame in case I miss something. It's all right here. It's pretty concise instructions, which is good. There you got a reading lamp, which is cool. It's got this strong flashlight. Of course, three power methods: solar charging, USB, and dynamo. Dynamo is the way to go, except you have to spin it like crazy <laughs> to get any kind of thing. Um, so. There you go. I always think they got this reversed. The radio shouldn't take as much energy. It says, crank it for one minute, and you'll get 25 minutes for the little flashlight. Don't think so. I think you get that for the radio, and five, six minutes for the beam. Solar panel, battery protection. Okay, cool. Yeah, the radio barely takes any energy to run. And then here we go. Talks about saving the batteries. We're going to talk about the batteries, too, which is kind of fun. Yeah, you'll get to see that. It's pretty cool. It's got a power level power level indicator uh, because it's kind of like a power bank, even though they say not to use it like one, though they do provide you with a couple jacks. Specifications. All right, cool. So there's the frequency ranges right there. We've got some dimensions, some weight, 510 grams. So it weighs a good chunk. If you look there, it says two times 5,000 million power batteries. Yeah, I got to find it out up close and personal. And uh, it says waterproof IPX3. You know, I'd still keep it out of the rain or wetness. Just me, personally. And then you got some run times there. If you look, you get uh, a radio for 96 hours at middle volume, not metal volume. <laughs> it's meddling. <laughs> it's hilarious. And you can see how the flashlights have their own run times, much less than the radio. So there you go. And then, of course, care and maintenance if you need. And we're done. Okay. So... Let's go ahead. You know what I'm going to do here? Because red on red it just tends to blend. I'm going to put a piece of board down just to kind of get contrast on this radio. So we can kind of see the true color of it. Kind of zoom this on down a little bit. It covers it. All right, cool. So let's go to dimensions of the SW10. It's seven inches in length. It's three and three quarter inches in height. And it has a depth of three inches. So it's pretty wide body. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely a wide body. Things awesome though, um, for capacity. So for size comparison, I usually bring out radios, but it's barely fitting on here. Uh, let's just bring out CC Pocket. Just gonna kind of put it right on there. CC Pocket's an AM FM a weather alert radio as well. A lot of you know that already. But a little pocket radio. Just give me an idea how thick this other radio is. Yeah, pretty awesome. So that's the current time for band scans, 11.54 p.m. I'm Central Daylight Time near Chicago, Illinois, USA. That helps you out. Here we got a CC Skywave I always bring out for frequency checking. We will not need this tonight. I don't think so. Um, yeah, the AM band isn't fantastic, and we'll get to that. We'll talk about it. There's the CC Skywave, shortwave radio, weather alert as well. That's a cool little radio. If you don't own one of those, we have a deck of cards. 
Iron Man. Yeah, he's the man with the master plan. He loves raddies from China land. Dick -dick -dick -dick. Yeah, he's Iron Man. Rocking it out with his portable transistor radio, man. Rock on. Yeah, get one today. <laughs> nice. Yeah, no, it's cool. Um, so these high capacity uh, emergency radios are kind of neat. Uh, they seem to be the future. I'm seeing them at 8,000, 10,000. We're going to start probably seeing 15, 20,000. You'll have this portable power bank with a radio attached, which is, I think, neat because you have a lot of extra capacity. And if you're diligent about keeping it charged, no problem at all. So let's go over features of the SW10. Now, when you look at this radio, you think soft touch plastics, but nope, it's all hard, hard plastics, which is nice. The only soft touch is this like rubber jacket here that tries to keep it waterproof. Not a very great thing the way they did this a uh, little grommage thing here trying to push it in there it's about as tight as it gets um yeah that's and then you get the rubber switch up here that's about it everything else is nice hard plastics and it seems to fit and finish pretty well so the only thing i noticed that I didn't like about it was the dynamo handle is a little bit rattly in there if you're carrying this around but i don't think you are you're probably just keeping this for an emergency so probably not a big deal so let's go over some features um, on this side here we have a dual flashlight. We have a middle center beam that goes for your spot or throw. And if you look here, we got a ring light. Um, that's your area lighting. So if we have the switch up here for the flashlight, we press it once, turns on our fire beam, press it again, does the flood beams, which is really nice for, for lighting up an area here. See, nice diffused area. And then of course, if you hit it again, it does both, which I don't know why you'd run both, but extra lighting. And that's how that works. So you get the three modes. And aim it at the light, at the camera, I mean, it would just mess it up, though. All right, so that's on top. And, of course, we got this carry strap. It's getting in the way, but, you know, it's nice to carry it with it. It's got a compass. Now, the cool thing about the compass is it does work. It just doesn't work on my bench because I think I have some strong magnets with some portable radios behind here. So north is pointing towards those radios. But I, if I went off camera and I put this radio by itself, it will point north, which is that way. So it's nice. You just lift the handle up here. You get the compass away from the electronics of the radio, and it will point north, so not bad. But I was trying to do it on my desk. Like, why does it keep pointing to that way? Oh, yeah, I got super radios in that direction. <laughs> Some monster-sized speakers over there. So, yeah, you got the carrying strap. You got the solar panel. You got the radio lamp underneath. As you can see, we open it up, and we got some nice light. Directional. So I can kind of give you an idea. Yeah, so it's got a nice strong reading lamp there. Not bad. And the times are on that uh, piece of paper there, if you're wondering. Um, you get 40 hours of runtime if you're using the reading lamp by itself. The flashlight was 36 hours. The floodlight was 30, and then both was 18 hours on the front. So, give you an idea there. Uh, let's go to the front of the radio. We have a 2-inch speaker, which is fairly bright-toned. You're not going to want to turn it up too loud. It's not jamming low bass. Like some of those radios, like the Sanjin MMR99, that thing's a rock monster. Um, this one is not. Uh, we got a little dial here, as you can see, AM band on top and FM band on the bottom. Pretty basic. We have a charge status indicator here. Turns red when we're getting a charge, like say from solar. There you go. See that? Nice. And when we plug in the USB, it also shows charge status. Uh, tuning LED turns green when you're in tune. And of course, we got four blue LEDs that show our battery capacity when we're using the power bank feature. We have an SOS, so if I press and hold this, this is going to make a siren, a loud siren, and flash the light. I'm going to do this, so if you can't stand loud noises, turn your volume down. So here we go. <coughs> Tap it again, turn it off. Nice. Flashes the light, does the siren, and these lights come on here. So down here we have band select switch, FM, AM. Bring that up there, small printing. FM, AM, weather band, and alert. Now when you're in the alert mode, all it does is it mutes the radio and it waits for an alarm tone from the NOAA weather service. And if it does that, it automatically turns the radio on and you get to hear the alarm plus what follows. Uh, tuning, turn this back and forth, of course. We'll turn a little analog. And then down here we have our on off volume control. On the side here, a lot of features. Uh, we have two USB outputs for charging two devices at once. I tried it, it works. Um, if you're use, just using one, it charges uh, five volts, one amp out. If you're doing both, you're probably going to get divided. I couldn't put two meters side by side, but if you did, you'd probably get half amp on each one. Not bad for small drain devices, or if you're trying to charge a phone or two phones in an emergency to get a text out, that's the way to do it. Here's your Type-C input 
5 volts, 2 amps in. There's our headphone jack. Headphone experience is pretty decent. No low-level hiss. Um, there's no stereo. It's FM mono, both ears. Uh, expect strong lows, moderate mids, and moderate highs on FM, so it's pleasing to listen to with FM music. And AM and weather bands, nice too, uh, with a low neutral tone. So there you go. That's what I got out of that. Now, I do want to mention, uh, after we get to the batteries, what does power deliver? I always like to check the capacity of these radios and kind of measure it up to give you an idea just how good they are. So, that, see this, this kind of flimsy little rubber jacket. Don't expect it to waterproof anything. Okay. So, back of the radio, we have our dynamo crank. And we have an on-off switch, which is fantastic. When you hit off, the whole radio turns off. So it's there's no parasitic drain on the batteries. That's nice. Um, if you notice, there's no dry battery bay, which is unfortunate. I wish it had that. It's a big enough radio to incorporate it. There you go, SW10. And of course, you can spin this. It's very easy to spin. I mean, I'm not going to demo this. It's, but it's smooth. It's easy to spin. So dynamo, yay. <laughs> on the bottom is where the batteries go. It says, warning, do not open the battery cover. Well, guess what? When I see a sign like that, I open it. <laughs> it's got four metric um, hex uh, hex wrench there. Took the four out, and I was greeted by two 21700s, similar to this battery here, except not as high quality. Um, they're marked 5000. They were uh, flat tops with a button top attached, so they, want, they don't want you to put them in backwards or one one way, one the other way, or mixed batteries. That's why they probably have this warning. If you're not used to running two cells in parallel and don't understand the concept, that's why you never open it up. <laughs> but it has two batteries. I'll put a picture up here. You can check out the picture. There it is. Um, showing the two batteries and me opening up the door there. Um, and you can see the they're Chinese made cells with a simple button top. All right, back to bench. Yeah, so that's cool. I got to see that. Forgot I had that picture. Um, and then uh, we have the. Uh, yeah, 21700s. It's nice. They're just not as advertised. Power delivered uh, when I did a test with this radio. I hooked it up to an iPad and charged it. Uh, 5 volts, 1 amp, continuous until this uh, battery drained all the way. And I got a total of 5,417 milliamp hours or 26.74 watt hours delivered. Again, at 5 volts at 1 amp. Um, that equals about 72% efficiency. Um, not that great because if it had an internal capacity watt hours of uh, 37, which is 10,000 milliamp hour. Um, if it had 37, that would be that efficiency down to 72%. That's not fantastic. So I'm thinking the cells, um, <clears throat> they're Chinese generic cells, and they're probably 4,000s is my guess. And that would make the efficiency of this radio about 90% when charging. That sounds about right. So I'm guessing the cells that are in there aren't really 5,000s, or are probably 4,000s if I took them out and I tested them. I don't want to mess around taking them back out again doing that, but that is my guess with the power delivered. So there you go. All right, cool. But still neat. Uh, that's a decent capacity, 8,000 milliamp hour radio. Um, I found that with the uh, Iron Snow as well that I did, high, the high capacity one there. So let's go ahead and turn this on. We're going to do a demo. Um, yeah. We got FM here. I got this uh, C Crane transmitter. But before we get started, uh, FM um, reception report. Uh, I got, uh, I do a five tier rating fair, okay, good, very good, excellent. I found 60 stations with it, giving sensitivity of good rating, three star, above average. And I gave it a uh, three star good rating on selectivity. It's really good selectivity. I like it. I can find faint stations next to strong stations. Not a bad radio. It's hindered by the telescopic antenna, which I forgot to mention to you is 17 inches. It's that it's hiding. It's right here. Comes up and it does pivot. So that's kind of nice. It has a little spot there. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's go ahead and turn this up. So I call it Radio Totterbert. We're at 97.7 on my mini transmitter here. C Cranes FM transmitter 2. There you go. Antenna down. So there you are. Could overload anything. And uh, what it's doing is hooked up to a little MP3 player, playing some royalty-free music. I don't know if I can get all this in the frame here. Here it is. Let's go ahead and turn this up. Play for a few minutes.
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and turn that off. All right, cool. So get that uh, transmitter off. Okay, everything's off there. Great. So yeah, that's the uh, little audio demo I like to do. You compare it to other radios, get an idea of the speaker quality. If you load up the Sanjin MMR99, you will hear a huge difference. <laughs> I think it's like a bass monster. Um, so what we're going to do is, um, you know what? I do want to do the uh, weather band first. So we're going to go to weather band, so AM weather band. Oops, went all the way to alert. There's weather band. Uh, the cool thing is it has channels. So we'll go all the way to one. And I'm going to hook up this little wire that goes to my window. Uh, just because I'm in a subfloor basement. Uh, this doesn't go outside, just inside. And I'm going to just clip it right here to help us get some reception with uh, weather band and FM. So we're going to do FM band scan. Yes, we are. So let's go ahead and see what this thing can do. Cloudy. Channel 72. One. At St. Louis, it was partly cloudy and 84. So alert. At Dumoine, it was partly cloudy. So you just set it to alert, and you can tell it's still on, still in tune with that station one you have. So it'll only alarm on at channel one, and it'll turn on the radio, which is really nice when you're on alert. So you can have it plugged in uh, with the Type-C if you're going to run it all the time like this, or if it's storming and you don't really want to keep listening to the radio, you just want to hit alert so you can get other things done, uh, that's a nice feature. At the Port Washington Lakeshore, the air temperature was 66. Partly cloudy. Channel 2. 30% chance of Channel 3. Winds 10 to 15 at knots. Slight chance of showers and thunderstorms. 5. 5 bleeding Waves over 4. One foot. 6 nothing and 7. And falling. Elsewhere around the region. It was partly cloudy, with a temperature of 65 at Waikiki overnight. Waves around one foot. Saturday. So, so I went upstairs doing the FM reception report. Uh, I also got the weather reception report using Weather Channel. And I found five stations out of the seven, giving it above average score. Um, usually most uh, typical radios get three to four channels. So five is definitely above average. Um, I always like to say that. And of course, if you get all seven, that's the best. But uh, typically, I get five or six at the most. 11 a.m. Central Daylight Time. 
Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do an FM band scan. So go to the bottom, go to all the way to FM again. If you can see, I switched it to FM. Really small printing. I wish that printing was a little bigger. It could be, it's a big radio, right? Okay, turning it up. The county. Leave you. <laughs> You're the parent, but if you gotta look for me, I was said I was going to go to study medicine in Philadelphia. Bring it home. Twelve eleven a.m. Central Daylight Time. Near Chicago, Illinois. Again, in case you forgot. Full resolution to the conflict, but also while the conflict is ongoing, to avoid your. Um, the, uh, but is there any? Pick up some faint stations in between, as you can tell. It's on or off. It's not like leading into or distorting into, which is nice. But is there um, any evidence that the Sudanese armed forces, or in this case, particularly the... How? Because they made changes. He said, what diligence it produced in you. My and yet the killings continue. Unfortunately, they do, but... Part of the show uh, on uh, that night's uh, Saturday, August 19th as well. Los Lobos are going to be there. So is Bob Mould and uh, the Lindbergers. Ever heard of the Lindbergers? Pretty cool. Something's out of time. Ghostbusters, that's so awesome. 80s flashback. <laughs> For use of the member of the 80s, yeah, good times. <laughs> this is by his contemporary Edward Berstow. Classical music. Time of swelling and pain. If you're facing a fight as well, I thought... Yeah. Sharing how they are making their money. Summer, get $25. Intel next. This is the. So, this is really easy to tune. Volume's a little tricky here as you see it goes on or off real quick. But uh, tuning's really nice. It's, it stays where you put it. And uh, it's easy to tune, actually. Uh, These three simple steps can be the difference between life. Teenth new car dealers throughout Chicago will be hosting USO Bar. Damn language of people with short money. Come on now. St. Charles es diversión para todos. Atracciones de carnaval. I do hope they catch those thieves. Be sure to get in touch with me as soon as you have any further news. As I will read. 
If I'm not here, call me at home, Axford. I'll be interested to know the outcome. Old time radio. For Chesley's sake, I hope the police run them down before they dispose of it. Sure. Okay, Reed. So long. Goodbye, Axford. Did I hear you say that somebody took that diamond? Yes, Miss K. Sounds like Green Hornet. <laughs> and if it isn't found, Edna Chesley will be in rather difficult circumstances. Isn't it insured? Well, she said the insurance ran out some time ago and was never renewed. Her husband's business is in a bad way. If they don't get that stone back, it's going to be to her. A very hard blow. And get started with stamps.com today. Kingdom, everything I get touch like. Proszę, powiem panowie, dziękuję. Już do misja. Nie chcę. Do you know what to do when a car is pulled over on the side of the Okay, so we reached the top of the band. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, so they do old time radio on 105.9 in my area. Uh, it's the same as WBBM 780 on AM. So we're pretty much done with FM. As you notice, we're almost at the end of this video, and I didn't touch the AM band because AM band pretty much is a no go on this radio. Um, I got my one local station came in good on it. I'll show you. And uh, the band was pretty much not fantastic during the day. I got like one or two stations that were good. Some had spurious tones, probably generated by something internal. So yeah, it wasn't fantastic. But in the evening, I'm not sure. This will be the first. So we'll tune it and see what happens. And the power lights aren't on, so it must be something else. And of course, as you guys know, there's no RFI here because I can bring out the radio to show you. Or then just run a one source. So, um, you know, step one, if somebody comes to you anonymously. Uh, so that's 670 the score. Let's just show you that it's uh, pretty clear. Um, let's just plug it in here on the, the old Skywave. In order to give their story validity and credibility, you have to aggressively question them. So, yeah, this one here has all kinds of weird stuff going on on the AM band. Confirmation, right? Uh, right? That happened. Remember, there was a Washington Post story where it's in pain, and there are things. This is 720 WGN Chicago. We should have resolved, and now she's gone. They will never be resolved. Sure, I'll pick anything up distant. I don't think so. Studio, Unidin, social media at its best. Unidin.com today. If you drive a WGR Detroit, Michigan, even though it's not pleasant to listen to, um, it's 300 miles away or 270. That technology is designed to help people rig run it and save you money in the long run. Want to make a change? Well, don't despair. Classic drapery can give you a... 780 WBBM, Chicago. Phone and dial 773 Classic for your free in... Coast to coast, coming in somewhere. Maybe 8:40. Again, AM bands, nothing spectacular. So you buy this radio for the weather band, and the FM, and maybe a couple of strong locals if you live near a city. Probably 8:90. Oh, wait, 1,000 maybe? WMVP? Yeah, it's 1,000. WMVP Chicago. Local. More coast to coast. Eleven sixty, uh to be a YLL, hope for your life, Chicago. The transgressors, he never sinned, and it became sin for us that we So yeah, you get the idea, this thing is not good. I mean uh, uh, 
This is the Bloomberg Real Estate Report. I'm Denise Pellegrini. If new homes seem small... Some music. Lizzie's Black Friday in July event has arrived with limited quantity deals on top 10 to power any passion. Okay, that's it. All right, we're done. Yay. <laughs> the Ratty SW10 AM FM weather alert, high capacity emergency radio uh, for 35 bucks. Uh, you know, it's not a bad value because of the high capacity. The ability to charge um, is nice. You know, having like, it's pretty much like a portable power bank with a radio attached. Is It's nice. I do enjoy that. I do enjoy the FM. It sounds good. Headphones sound great. Uh, if you want to save power, always use headphones uh, in the emergency or if you're going to be power out for quite a while, that's the way to go. Um, I'll be honest with you, there, this is, gets a maybe recommendation. So not a upvote or downvote, but maybe. The reason why I say maybe is there's a lot of good high-capacity emergency radios out there. Some that are digital, have shortwave, have a clock alarm built into it uh, because those things are important uh, in an emergency. Um, I'd like to have the clock alarm in case power's out for a couple days. It's nice to, nice to have, just an idea there. Um, but uh, for just something basic, non-parasitic, uh, just for radio and light work, this is probably a, a great option for most people uh, that don't really need to have everything else because they have alarm clocks already that operate on batteries. Um, just something to think about. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, um, it gets a maybe recommendation because there's a lot of competition out there. Um, so it's really got to do something extra. If it had a dry battery bay, uh, i get a bigger recommendation. I wish it had that as well. But uh, not bad for what it offers. All right, glad you watched this, guys. Uh, if you want to see more Ratty uh, videos, make sure to subscribe to the bell icon, get notified. I got another one coming, uh, another interesting one, a lantern radio, which is pretty cool. And of course, uh, yeah, look out for that one. And three, comment below what you think about the SW10. Um, what's your take on it? Let me know. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in my next video.